around here what's going on guys got a new solar controller i'm going to show you how to set the solar controller up um this one seems a little bit more industrial uh a little bit heavy duty versus the one that i'm currently using and this is just a mock setup um i don't have the proper panel you can see the itty bitty little panel out there that's kind of keeping this battery charged but we're sitting at 10.2 and if you notice over there it keeps switching the moon to sun that's because it's really rainy out it's really dreary out this one should almost have the same type of thing where it lets you know if it's receiving any type of voltage or not but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this one and then uh, we'll get this connected up. Really for a shed setup, a mono crystal about the size of that one is what you wanna use. Top of my van, that's probably about the size panel that you wanna use on the top of a vehicle um, to give you supplemental power. Even on that shed, you can go something big like this. I do have two extra ones like this, so that might be actually what we end up hooking up, but for now, we'll show you a simple setup. All right guys, so we have it hooked up. You can see 23 degrees Celsius out, 10.1 volts. You can see the battery thing blinking. Um, I'm not sure what that 1.2 volts is because we don't have anything going into it. But we are going to go ahead and connect our solar panel. And the way you do that, you just simply tighten these up once you have your wires in them. They are all the way open. Um, and because this battery is so low, you can see we have an E3. That's probably a warning. Um, saying that the battery voltage is super low. Ideally, with such a small panel, maintaining this, it's barely maintaining it, I should fully charge this. This was a just a battery that I kind of had laying around, and I decided to hook up in here for supplemental power. But again, something like that isn't going to allow this to stay fully charged if it wasn't fully charged. If it was fully charged, it probably would. You probably want uh, something like that monocrystal I showed you or something that's uh, on top of my van. But let's go ahead and connect the solar panels. Always connect your battery before the solar here. Low voltage E3, uh, load of battery level shows, empty full icon display. So that's where uh, we're basically sitting right now is at an E3. Positive and negative over here is your solar panel. You can see that's blinking. I'm pretty sure that means, I mean, obviously we have an E3 warning because of the battery voltage. Pretty sure that means that it is charging despite the fact extremely gloomy day that's still bringing in some type of voltage for being such a small uh, battery charger. That's what it is, it's a battery maintainer. But I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna give this a decent charge, get this up to voltage. That way I can show you this a little bit All more right. properly. We hooked, uh, we hooked a battery charger to this. We charged up to like 12 volts. As you can see, we're sitting at like 12. 12.1, you can see the battery thing over there. It is moving, but as far as amps coming in, because we're using such a small solar panel that's actually covered in water, <laughs> um, it's not registering any amps, but it is registering that it's receiving something. Uh, I don't know what we have in our menu set up. A long hold. Yes, nothing. Um, going to look the cycle through again that's what we're sitting at and as you can see that is moving occasionally you see the 0 point um, one that that's the amperage that's coming in and again it's dude the sun's not out it's trying to come out but it's been raining all day uh, again this was basic setup and then you can run positive and negative off of this out to a device that way you have a uh, power coming directly out of this i highly suggest tapping off of your battery if you're going to use a like ac dc converter or something like that obviously this is a very crude setup but uh this is just to give you a look at a different solar controller and also uh how to set it up if you're new to this if you wanted to learn how to set it up uh larger solar panels you should have a fuse in between um, here in the solar panel and doing the same in between there and the power would be a smart thing. Show you the error codes. If you do decide to get this and you lose the instructions, you can pause it right here. E1 is a short circuit. E2 is over current. E3 is battery voltage, which that's what we had prior to charging this battery. Um, E4 would be battery voltage too high. E5 would be over temperature. And if you see that down there, then battery voltage is Basic abnormal. setup. You can see your first two terminals on the left side all the way to the left all the way over there um, you have your positive all the way left and you have your negative for your solar panel then next your left is your positive for your battery negative is your negative to your battery and then you have voltage out which positive and negative voltage out to like a light or something and again we can show you that right here um, positive for your solar panel negative for your solar panel positive for your
your battery, negative for your battery, positive out, negative so out. Visually to show you, they, they've actually said uh, basically what uh, I said here is uh, you really should not be connecting a charger, inverter, high amp drawing device off the positive and negative. Myself personally, as long as you have a good amp hour battery, which this is a standard car battery, you can get um, rechargeable batteries that are rated better than this. This is just a mock setup to show you guys. But myself in my van, I run a positive and negative off of my batteries. I have two batteries in there to a AC-DC converter. If I need to use a household item, I don't run it directly off of the controller. Then it says, do not connect solar panel before battery. Do not have the controller mixed with water. That's obvious if you do that. Well, shame on you. Um, do not disassemble, repair the controller. Do not connect inverter, battery chargers uh, to the load of the controller. That's what we just explained and also what that shows up there. And do not exceed the max input power of your controller. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button, questions, comments, concerns, definitely get at me down below. And you can see we are moving again. Then it stops, then it goes, very, very minimal. There, there, the sun's coming out now. There, uh, it just showed 0 0.1, maybe we could show you that again. Nope, it's not going to show it again. Uh, just to show you that there is definitely a little bit of voltage coming in here. It's not going to show it again. I bet it's not going to show it again. There, 0 0.1. Right, guys, if it. you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button. Questions, comments, concern, definitely get at me down below. And as you can see, we've actually dropped to 11.9. Again, not ideal. What's on the van, what I showed you on my van, that's ideal. Even the small monocrystal that I have sitting in my dash would keep this charged and you would actually be able to draw off of this. This is just a very, very small trickle on a pretty much used battery, but... As you can see here, we've got the battery up to, uh, let's see here, 0 0.1 it's drawing in, 11.9, it was sitting at 12. We didn't fully charge it, we charged it enough just to show you this device. Again, subscribe, hit the like button, catch you on the next video, later.